We're going to present longitudinal findings from the project, from the longitudinal survey, and uh, it's, uh, it's over three years. And um, it has been a school-based longitudinal survey, which means that we have collabor collaborated with um, schools. First of all, uh, some numbers. We did uh, data collection in three waves, uh, 2021, 22, and 23. And we started um, approaching with approaching 99 schools. We didn't end up uh, with collaborating with all of them, but it was uh, more than 50 that we started with in the first wave. And we did um, uh, collaborate with schools at the secondary level and uh, surveyed young people between 12 and 17 years old. The data collection was carried out in Estonia, Finland, Germany, Italy, Poland, and Portugal. And I also want to use this presentation um, saying thank you so much to the survey partners who did, had a lot of, did a lot of efforts for making this survey possible. We collected uh, 6,000 um, uh, data from 6,000 uh, respondents per wave. And the goal was not only, to, which was exactly what our goal was, but we had a second goal, and that was to collect data from the same students every year. So in every wave, we uh, aimed at um, having the same respondents in the survey. Um, as you can imagine, that wasn't easy, and the people, they go to different schools and, or move for personal reasons and change schools. So in the end, uh, we, um, ended, we um, received a sample size from 2,660. These are the students that we could follow from one wave also to the next wave. And, uh, and the next wave. And uh, the way it worked out, we did data collection. We actually went to the schools and uh, collected data during uh, class. And uh, that was an, uh, so the survey was online, so mostly it was done in computer rooms. And because we started in the first, second year of uh, the pandemic, uh, some data collection also took home in uh, distance education, took place in distance education at the uh, young people's homes. You've heard this before in the presentation uh, by Lynn, but and also by David, that we have four developed four categories of uh, of digital skills, and here you see one example, so that it's more uh, that you got a better idea of what it is for those who don't know. Um, the, for each uh, category of digital skills, so for the technical and operational skills. Um, and we have measured them on a five-point scale, and one m means not at all true of me, and five is uh, very true of me, and it's self-reported skills. So the, and the example for, the te for technical operational skill would be, I know how to turn off the location, location settings on mobile devices. The example for information navigation and processing skills is, I know how to check if the information I find online is true. The example for communication interaction skill is, I know which images and information of me it is okay to share online. And finally, the content creation production skills, the example is, I know how to edit existing digital images, music, and video. Um, Ellen Halsper will, I think at 12 o'clock um, uh, before the lunch break, she will give a more detailed um, Presentation on the development of the uh, of the DS of the Youth Digital Skills Indicator. Here, I know you can't read it. Sorry for that. Um, but uh, just to give you an idea, that uh, it was six items per category of digital skills. But we did not only uh, measure the self-reported digital skills, but we also had items that measured the actual digital knowledge the young people have, and we had. Um, also six items where they were asked if they think with statements and uh, the respondents had to say if they think that these statements are definitely true or definitely not true. And here I have uh, two examples that were for the information and navigation skills. And, uh, but as measured as knowledge items. And uh, the first one is everyone gets the same information when they search for things online. Uh, 
which we measured as not true. And uh, the, the second item is the first research, the first search result is always the best information source. So, and we also will think this is uh, not correct, not true. Now, um, some general findings. The first uh, question that I will answer here is how did the, or the first question that we will look at here now is how did digital skills develop over the three years of investigation? Here you see, um, not sure, uh, you probably can't read the numbers, but no problem. I'll tell you what is most important here. You can see the four categories of digital skills and uh, to the right, the digital knowledge items and the numbers or the length of the bars. <laughs> you can see here, um, think of it of percentages. It's the percentage of uh, young people who say that uh, they uh, have or, um, oh no, it's the percent. <laughs> It's the, it's the percentage of uh, the items where they have reported to know very well. So the longer the bar, to make it short and easy, the longer the bar, the better the skills. And if, you, if we compare um, on, the, on, on the top, you, we have on the, on the left hand side, you have the technical and operational skills, right next to the communication interaction skills, you can see the bars are the longest here, which means uh, most skilled. And uh, in general, we can say the communication skills are, uh, the respondents were doing uh, great with communication and interaction skills, we're doing okay with technical and operational skills, but we see a lot of deficits above all in information uh, navigation and processing skills. So that's the main message here from this slide. Um, and yeah, and what you also can see uh, is here you have per category three bars, the blue one, the orange one, and the green one. And this is the development over the three years. And now, but the, I will show you in the next slide in more, on the next slides in more detail how the development uh, was going on per category. So the most increase uh, in develop, like in general, uh, there was a bit of an increase in all kinds of categories of digital skills. However, only in the technical and operational skills we we see much of an increase, especially between the first wave and the second wave. Uh, might be due to the pandemic that there were more um, they had to use more the computer uh, at home. Um, anyways, and we also see that there is uh, a relevant increase in uh, the digital knowledge. From, also again from the uh, wave one to wave two, and, but also from wave two to wave three. If we look at the other kinds of other categories of digital skills, such as content creation, communication, and information, the changes from one wave to the next wave are very small. They're hardly relevant, we have to say. So this was to give you an overview on um, the, the development of, of the three years. And before Hannah goes into more detail now, uh, I will make a quick summary. So we have learned that the young people are least skilled in information and navigation and uh, information navigation and processing skills, and uh, that the skills, the digital skills that we have measured did not develop all the same. Um, the technical and operational skills progressed much within the investigated time frame, as well as the digital knowledge, but uh, information and navigation skills, communication, interaction skills, and content creation, production skills, um, they, didn't, they did not increase uh, that much. And this shows us that it's really important to um, apply a multi-dimensional approach to digital skills. And now I pass on to Hannah. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
Uh, hi, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you. Uh, I'm Hannah, and I will be talking a bit more about uh, actually in more depth actually what's happening in terms of de uh, development of digital skills and actually how the digital skills can impact what's happening next. Uh, and uh, I will be presenting just a few selected findings from our report because our report is quite huge. There's a lot of factors we were pursuing and there were a lot of uh, robust analysis and I would like uh, to give full credit to Vienna team who did a great analysis and thank you for that. And as David mentioned, uh, Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, in our analysis for now, in the report, we actually uh, managed to disentangle this within personal level. This is something I will be mostly talking about today. And that this actually, what happens when something increases? Does it actually impact, you know, the, uh, and the factors in the second wave, in the third wave? And we kind of managed to disentangle this from the between personal levels, which is more about the general associations. So today I will be talking mostly about the impact, what we see there. And uh, we had set of a series of analyses when we were focusing on selected factors that we selected based on you know, the systematic review and uh, review of existing literature and also prior analysis. So in here, I'll be shortly presenting several models when we focused on uh, first of all, parental mediation, restrictive mediation, and enabl enabling mediation. We were also focusing on the role of self-efficacy, and we were also focusing uh, on the role of online activities. Um, they, these were counted as number of daily activities, but basically represent the diversity of activities children are engaging on a daily basis in their lives, um, which were related to information, communication, entertainment, content production, and learning. So, uh, <laughs> I included also a graph, also a plot, which basically I think you can't see, but, uh, uh, and it's a bit complex, but I think it's nicely representing what's happening there. And basically what we have there is this set of variables, uh, some are analyzed on this within and between person uh, level. And when we have red lines, the effect is not significant. When we have blue lines on the right side, Yes, uh, the effect is positive, and when we have it on the uh, on the left side, the effect is uh, negative. But uh, fortunately, you do not have to see the plots now. Uh, we just briefly summarized what's actually happening there. So, in terms of impact, what's actually impacting the development of the skills? So, we find that communication and interaction skills were actually positively impacted by the increase of this diversity of daily activities or uh, online engagement, but we are also positively impacted by the increase in self-efficacy there were no negative impact. Then we focused on information navigation and processing skills, and basically the pattern was the same. We saw this positive impact of number of daily activities and self-efficacy. With content creation and production skills, we only saw that self-efficacy play a positive role. The higher or the more increased in self-efficacy the children were, the higher the content creation and production skills were in later years. And and with regard to technical and operational skills, we again see this positive impact of self-efficacy. But here we also found a negative impact, specifically of parental restrictive mediation. So actually, if the restrictive mediation increased, the children later reported lower technical and operational skills. And just to say, when we were analyzing the digital knowledge items, there actually were no direct you know, impact of all these factors. So just to summarize, uh, so what we see here, parental mediation, which is a factor which is hugely discussed, you know, in these debates about uh, how we actually are introducing children to digital world and, you know, kind of um, helping them to, you know, gain these skills. It seems now that they do not have direct positive impact on the development of, the, uh, of any type of skills. And we even see that restrictive parental mediation actually has a negative impact, specifically on the development of technical and operational skills. Uh, we also see that uh, for the development of information and navigation skills, uh, self-efficacy and number of only, uh, daily online activities play a positive role. <clears throat> and for the development of content creation production skills as well as technical, only self-efficacy actually made direct impact over the years, over the three years we are, uh, we are focusing on. And um, yeah, we find only one negative impact and that was of the restrictive parental mediation. And just to provide some conclusion, 
I don't know, Natalia, if you want to say it. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> because you provided this. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so we, we can see that actually self efficacy is a key factor in most digital skills development. So, that's one of the uh, personal characteristics we really need to pay attention and help children to develop and to increase. And we should work with that because this is actually then later translated and reflected in higher digital skills. We also need to kind of consider parental mediation. So, um, Yes, we, have, we are having children from 12 to 17. Uh, it's children, but it's also adolescents. So uh, here's some proposition that the parents need actually to learn that for the children, it is most important to learn using the digital autonomously. Well, the restriction is kind of making a barrier in this development and actually have, can actually have this negative effect. Uh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, and I wanna, I wanna add that um, since the uh, since we see that as restrictive as well as enabling parental mediation does not really help uh, in developing digital skills, the conclusion is also that as a, in adolescence it's kind of too late. So it's helpful for children, for younger children, and also so they build up self-efficacy, uh, especially in regards also to digital skills. But in adolescence, they ha must have already learned to. Um, to uh, use uh, media, digital media autonomously, that would be one of the conclusions. Okay, yeah, thank you. So, uh, yeah. So, and so this was one, one line of our research actually. So what's helping to develop skills? But other line of research and the questions is, so what role actually skills play in the child's development? And here we, uh, because we have really uh, so many so many findings, we decided to focus only on the online opportunities or specifically the engagement and specific online activities. And here we are kind of changing the logic and we are looking at the, what is the effect of these four dimensions of digital skills and digital knowledge on these selective, uh, selected activities. So yeah, the logic is the same, but now we are looking what actually skills are changing in children over the time. So when we are looking on this uh, diversity of uh, use of, the, uh, of internet and digital technologies, we see that uh, uh, positive impact actually has have uh, this increased in communication and interaction skills. So children who are increasing in these are mo over the time more and more engaged in more and more online activities. And as I said, it was learning, uh, um, engagement, it was communication, it was information and so on. And again, we had no negative impact. When we are went into specific type of activities, so here we can uh, find somebody that we expected. So, for example, content production is positively impacted by higher content uh, creation and production skills. Uh, when we are looking at communication, it is uh, increase in communication and interaction skills is actually resulting in increase in communication with peers. But this is also caused by the technical and operational skills. The more increased they are, the more they are con communicated with ranked. And here uh, we also find one negative impact, and actually that is of uh, programming skills. And here, um, yeah, we were talking about technical and operational skills, and so far we didn't uh, distinguish programming skills as something which is a bit specific. I think Ellen will be talking about it more. Uh, basically, we had. Uh, based on the psychometric properties of, of the scales, we used programming as a specific item. And I think this was a good decision because we he, here we see really this diverse, diverse effect. You know, technical and operational skills as a whole construct have a positive effect. Programming actually has negative impact. And I just wanted to mention that, for example, entertainment, which is something which is very prevalent across, uh, you know, what children are doing online, there was no direct positive impact, neither in negative impact, at the same, uh, the same applied for the learning things online. So just again to summarize, and I'm almost at the end. <laughs> so uh, we saw that uh, communication and interaction skills, uh, high increase in communication and interaction skills result in higher overall digital engagement and increased communication. Uh, online communication was also positively impacted by these technical and operational skills, but there's this opposite effect of programming skills, and uh, content creation and production skills had positive impact on engagement in creative online activities. We, uh, quite surprisingly, did not find in here, in these selected activities, no direct effect of information navigation and processing skills or digital knowledge items. 
and uh, yeah, we didn't find no effect on online learning and entertainment. So just to conclude, conclude this part, I think um, this provides an interesting insight into these diverse effects of digital skills and different types of skills and also like knowledge. And of course, some of them align with the proposals and prior evidence that suggested that really diverse skills foster diverse activities and we saw this. But we also saw these other patterns, for example, technical operational skills and programming. However, I would like to urge a bit caution in this because we do not want to say do not teach children programming because it will cause them, you know, to, to be talking less with their peers. You know, this is this is not the message. I just wanted to uh, finish this talk with some final remarks because uh, these are presented uh, results from this complex report, but still, we are actually still working on our data. We collected the data in spring, now there's a lot of effort to put more into more in-depth insight, specifically when, why, for whom is actually, um, like actually some special social or psychological factors or specific online experiences, beneficial or risky, translated in the, uh, you know, increase or decrease skills. And when this is translated into, let's say, more, uh, more online engagement, encountering of more, uh, more online risk or effect on general well-being. So I just wanted to say, if you are interested, please check out our report. There's a lot of uh, other things we were uh, looking for, but uh, looking into, but also please follow our work because a lot of team members in Vicecals are now doing great work and there will be a lot of new studies which are really providing even more in-depth insights in what's actually happening in terms of impact of digital skills and impact on digital skills. Thank you.